so much with Mr. Wisdom. So much. I hope you're feeling well. She says, good morning, family of God. The presence of the Lord is here. Give him first place. Amen. How are you doing? Did you sleep well? As we wait for more to filter in, I'll give a couple of minutes and let them all filter in. How are you doing, Johnny? Are you doing better? Are you feeling better? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Just taking a few sips of my coffee. It's a little chilly this morning. It's been like that. Ooh, sorry, guys. Really forgot to do that. That's a first. It is, let's see, it is 44 degrees today. It's 44 degrees here, so it's a little on the chilly side. It's a little on the cold side. But um, I'm resting on the Lord today. I think I'm going to spend some major, major time today. Just, um, I mean, there are some things that I need to do as far as like cleaning and stuff. But I think that I'm going to spend some time in the just in God's presence today. I just, I don't know. I feel that drawing away, like come away with me. I'm feeling that this morning. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, good morning. How are you doing? How was your night? Ooh. Warming up my hands. Are y'all like me? Okay, so I'm like super cold na natured, which is why y'all see me bundled up most of the time. And I normally have this or I have it on another shrug. And um, I have my beanie on today because one, it's really cute. And two, because it's a really good way of like doing my hair when my hair is being in a weird place and it's growing and I'm trying to let it grow. And so while I'm letting it grow, I'm trying to find ways to like, I don't know, do new things with it. And I haven't done very many bit beanies. It was good. Just finished my three mile walk. How was your rest? It was very good. Good. I rested very well last night. Um, I got. I went to sleep pretty quickly after the guys got off. After the fam, fam family called at a night, and um, so it was a good night. Very good night. It was chilly this morning, and so. Like I was saying earlier, it's 44 and I'm a little on the, I run on the cold day dirt side. So I always have like, that's why I always have coffee or I'm always a little more bundled up because when I'm feeling cold, I want to be comforted. And so, and then I have my, my gray blanket right here. If I, it, just in case I need to pull it <laughs> to give me some extra coverage. Um, but I did sleep really well. Well, welcome everybody. Um, a couple more will, I'm sure, fi file in as we move along our time together. This time is called At the Willow Tree. And At the Willow Tree is, the Willow Tree itself is just a place that I go to to spend intentional time with the Lord. And so it's our sweet place. Um, so I read a devotion, I pray before I come on, and then... Uh, we read a devotion together and we read a chapter in psalm together and we talk about it and I take prayer requests. So if you have a prayer request, um, send it to me, post it, and I will make sure to add it to my journal so that I can be praying for all of you. Good morning. I'm also bundled up this morning, jacket and sweats. Yeah. So yesterday I was in my Jaywalker sweater in my jeans and um, my beanie. I was saying I love beanies because this is like five minute hair prep, like no joke. And the five minute, and really it's under five minutes because it's like pin here, push to the front, hat and pin. So I pin my hats, my beanies, so they stay in case I have to go out and it's windy outside so I don't lose it. 
So it's an easy way to do it. And now my hair is long enough that it sticks out past the beanie versus like in the fall when it was like just at the beanie. Um, and so my hair's growing really nicely and I'm trying to let it grow. And so, you know, when your hair is growing and it's growing and you get to that weird, like awkward stage, that's where I'm at right now with the awkward stage. Well, I'm glad you were all here. I'm glad you are all gathering with me this morning. We are going, we are on day 46. I talked to one of my friends the night before last and I told her, I was like, I've been doing this thing. And she was one of the first people to ever suggest, you need to write a book. She used to tell me, um, we used to have all kinds of conversations and I used to tell her stuff that, you know, like I felt like God was showing me and um, always like um, insights that I felt like God was showing me. And she's like, you need to write a book about all these things. And then I remember in the fall, um, other than my girls who, who attend girls night on the weekends, um, I hadn't really said anything before I started this except to her. And I told her that um, I was thinking like God was going to call me to start a podcast or something like that. And um, she thought it was the coolest thing ever. She's like, yes. And so she's so excited, excited for me and proud. She's like, I'm so proud of you. And so more pe people learning about what we're doing. So, and then I took another step and started posting the videos that I post on TikTok on my other platforms as well. And um, so that everybody, I'm, I'm sharing what, I'm sharing the word with as many pe pe people will hear it as possible because I think it's so important that in the coming days and as we've just, it just seems like such a time of darkness in our world as a whole, there's not a lot of light. There's not a lot of hope. And the word is hope. The word is life and it's nutrition for our soul. And so I think it's so important to try and encourage pe people with the things that we can. Johnny said, I always look forward to communicating with you all. Good and blessed morning. I'm so glad you're here, Johnny. Okay. So today's devotion, we are on day 46 and I posted it this morning on my TikTok. Um, excuse me guys. I'm so sorry. My nose, my nose is cold. Okay. It is called Supreme God. That is our devotion for today. And it, the scripture is in Joshua 2, 11. And it says, No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. I want to go to Joshua 2 because I want to just kind of discover what is going on in all of this. And so, um, you're right, Johnny, without hope, there is no life. There is no life. And Jesus is hope. And so without Jesus, there is no life. And, um, I never want to be, <laughs> I never want to be away from Jesus ever. That is my safety. That is my safe place. <laughs> um, okay. So in reading Joshua 2, Joshua 2 is all about when Joshua was getting ready to march around Jericho. And the angel had told him, this is what I want you to do. I want you to march around. I want you to go to Jericho and I want you to march around the wall. I don't want you to say anything. Just quietly march around the wall one time for six days. And on the seventh day, I want you to walk around it seven times. Have the worshipers lead you and this, after the seventh time, I want you to shout out words of praise. And basically, I'm saying, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, watch me work. And so what Joshua was doing was while he was, he was getting all of the information, he sent out spies into Jericho to go survey what was going on. If you, you're sending out spies, you're wanting to get a feel for what is the word on the street. You know, like what, what is everyone feeling? What is the mood of the town? Are the, Where are their weak spots? You're wanting to scope it all out. 
Okay. So they're sending out spies and Rahab protects the spies. The king of Jericho has said, you know, if they're here, I want to know about it. If, if they send out spies because they knew that was the way that they had worked previously, I want to know about it. Don't be caught hi hi hiding them or, you know, it's going to be bad for, for, for you. Again, I'm par paraphrasing the story. And Rahab protected the spies and she protected them under the guise of, if I protect you, I want safekeeping for myself and my fam family. I want to be protected. And so um, they made that agreement with her that they would honor her. And how amazing is it that God protect used um, that the person that would rest that protected them was someone of ill re re repute. Okay. Rahab was a prostitute. She was known in Jericho as a prostitute. And yet it was the, it was the least expected that protected the spies. It was the least expected that ended up saving, um, making sure that they were safe so that they could get all of the information that they, they need, they need, needed. And so the spies go back and they tell Joshua, the people of Jericho are terrified. The king is terrified. And this is Joshua's response. No wonder our hearts have been melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. This is Rahab telling them, like, this is what the mood is in town. We're all terrified because we know what God has been doing for you. And so the king is terrified. The people are terrified because you, you like, your God is the Supreme God. Now, now that we have all of that background, let's read our love letter from Abba this morning. Beloved, I am the God of, of heaven and earth. I long for you to know how powerful I am and how much I care for you. I know that there is much that can cause you to be afraid. And it breaks my heart to see you struggle with the giant of fear. But nothing is bigger or stronger than my love, power, and presence. Hide my word in your heart when you are afraid. Speak my promises out loud. When you call to me, I will come. Not always in the way you expect, but according to what is best for you. I am your constant protector who never takes his eyes off of you. Love your heavenly father. The reflection says, we have a choice. Will we allow fear to cripple us or will we do what it takes to fight our fear by, and walk by faith? When your faith is bigger than your fear, nothing you face will overwhelm you. God's power is greater than anything the world can throw at you. And the treasure of truth is, there is nothing to fear if you know the power of your Father in heaven. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit. Yesterday, if you hung around after Devo's, um, after I finished reading the chapter and I told everybody they could leave, my my cousin asked my cousin Ashley asked a question. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, guys. Let me take a sip of coffee. My cousin asked a question about fear because when we were growing up, I don't know if it, this is the same for you guys, but when we were growing up, we, I, her and I, we feared the rapture. Um, we were part of the church that taught hellfire and brimstone. There wasn't a lot. There were moments of, in times where we heard about the love of Jesus and the love of God for God to love the world, you know. But for a lot of times, there was a lot of fear. And in the 70s, there was a series of movies called The Mark of the Beast or the Left Behind series. And they filmed it in the 70s. And I remember watching it as a child and being terrified. It was terrifying. <clears throat> And because nobody wanted to be 
one of those people that was left. And even in the original, even in the book series and in the movie series, there, were, there was a believer, there was a person who was, who had leadership in the church in the Left Behind series that was left. And so there was always this idea that just because you say you're a Christian doesn't mean that you're going to be taken in the rapture. And so there was a lot of fear. And we see this happening a lot with a lot of people who like to predict dates and times. We know the sea seasons to look for. Jesus told told us what to look for. When we would know, um, we won't know the date or the hour, but the seasons that we would know his return is soon. And so we know that he's coming soon. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. And why is that? We don't know the day or the hour because Jesus at the end of the day was a Jew. He's not a Christian. He was a Jew. Okay. And he practiced Jew Judaism. He practiced observing the law. He practiced the feasts and the festivals and all of those things. And he kept the commandments of the, the Lord. Okay. And so, um, even though he, he is the fulfillment of the, the law, you know, Jesus is the embodiment of the, the law. He observed all of those things. And so you constantly see, so we, in Jewish tradition, the groomsmen or the groom, right? The betrothed, he would propose and then he would go away. Good morning, Ashley. Girl, you came on the right time. I was waiting for you to come in here because we are talking about fear today. That's what our devotion is on and being afraid. Okay, so back to what I was saying. In Jewish tradition, the idea was after the proposal had been made, the groom <clears throat> would go back to his father's house and he would build onto the home. And it was not until the father felt the time was ready that he would send his son to go bring his bride home. It was up to the father to determine those things. It was his decision to make. And we see this a lot in the Bible where there are a lot of things um, where things here are a copy <clears throat> Of things in heaven. The things of heaven are, are on a much different scale than what we have. But they are a copy. Just like there's a, there was a temple of God here. There is a temple of God in heaven. So just like Jesus said. When Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place. right, I'm going to prepare a place for, for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you. I will come back to you and receive you unto myself. And there you will be with me forever, right? He is going to prepare our home. He's going to prepare for the wedding. And once everything is in place, and once Father God, Abba God, deems it is time, he will send out our groom to come and take us. There is nothing to fear if we know that we are a child of God. If anything... This should excite us because each day we get closer and closer to meeting our groom. Each day. But what a lot of things happen, and I've seen this a lot, especially if you're on social media. You see a lot of people that associate dates. And you see a lot of people talking about what's going to happen. I live in Texas. So the big thing that right now is the solar eclipse. Even though the solar eclipse event itself is not going to last very long, the whole idea of the eclipse as a whole is terrifying people. It is scaring people. It is associating, the, every, it's like every few months we have another event. First it was like the SDG or SGD or whatever it was, the Securities Council that was the time that Jesus was going to come back. That was the date 
That was the weekend that it was all going to ha happen. It didn't happen. But there was a lot of fear during that time that was put into people. And now, here, not even a year late, late, later, we're ass assigning another date. Here's the thing. Regardless of what God chooses to do or not, I don't have to be afraid. Because this is what it says. This is what our devotion is saying. It it's He's saying in his letter, there is much that can cause you to be afraid. There is much in our life. There is much going on in our world. There is a lot of things that can cause you to be concerned and afraid and worried. And all of these things. And it breaks my heart to see you struggle with this giant. This is a giant. And there have been a lot of times where I've associated the giants of fear, anger, anxiety, all of these things with the giants that were in the promised land. And it was the giants because they were looking at the giants instead of who, who their God is. Because their focus was on the giants in front of them, they could not, they they were in so much fear, they did not believe that the Lord could deliver that land to them. And they lost the promise. They lost their ability to walk in the promised land because of their fear. Their fear caused them to doubt who their God was. Even though he had been providing for it for them in the wilderness all this time. It is, uh, Robin said, for a lot of people, it is fear of the unknown. Absolutely. But what he's encouraging, but nothing is bigger or stronger than my love, power, and presence. Nothing. I posted it this morning in my stories. God has not come to give us a spirit of fear but of love, of peace, and of a sound, of power, of love, and a sound mind. If it's anything other than those things, it's not from God. God does, if it's anything causing fear, that's not from him. That's from the enemy making us feel like we need to be afraid of this. Why? Why? I'm a daughter of the king. Why do I need to be afraid? This is what I've been preparing for. Remember, we talked about this yesterday. We, we're preparing ourselves, right? If we're preparing ourselves and we're focused on preparing ourselves and we realize that earth is a temporary assignment, it is a temporary mission, then we know that at some point that mission is going to end, that time is going to come to an end, and it's going to be time to go home. So why do I need to be afraid? Why do I need to be afraid of the government? Why do I need to be afraid of people? Why do I need to be afraid of this thing or that thing or anything? Because nothing is too big for God. We read, this is our history of faith, guys. This is our history of faith. Go read Daniel. If you're, if you're feeling fearful of the government or what the government can, can do, go read Dan Daniel. And see what God can do. He's not bound by government. He's not bound or restricted for anything. He does not operate. <laughs> he has zero ounce of fear. We've read in Psalms where nations are coming together to make plans. And how he laughs at them. Because they're not seeking him for the plans. They're just trying to make the plans and think that their plan's going to work. And most of the time it doesn't. And so we see this, he's saying, but what is he telling us to do? He's giving us a blueprint. Hide my word in your heart. When you are afraid, speak my promises out loud. We are feeding ourselves on this. So that when times of difficulty come, we know what's in here. We know the promises of God. We have no reason to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid. Um, I was encouraging people on my um, TikTok this morning to write down the promises of God. In times of fear, what are, your pro what are the promises of God? We've been reading them throughout Psalm. 
The promise is he is, a, he is my refuge, my strength. He is my provision. He is the source of all that I need. Speak the promises of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I lack nothing. Speak those promises. That is your weapon against fear. And he's telling us, when you're afraid, speak my promises out loud. Write them down now. In a time where you're not afraid, write them down. Post them all over. And then when fear tries to grip you, go to that place. Because you've written them down, go to that place, whether it's a book or it's your wall or your mirror or wherever. When you call to me, I will answer. I will come. He will come. We've seen that. Come to my rescue. And then the next chapter in Psalm is talking about how God has rescued. Why? Because he comes to us. He sees. He sees us. And when we call out to him, he answers. If my child calls out to me because something's going on and they're terrified, what am I going to do? When I tell them, go back to bed. No. If my seven-year-old comes to me and says, Mom, I'm, I'm so scared. Like, this happened. Okay. I'm going to comfort my son first. And then I'm going to speak the truth. Nothing is going to come get you. Mom is not going to allow anything to hurt you. Just, you know, like, that's the same way God is. When something comes to make us afraid, God, this is very scary. But I don't want this to cause fear in my life. I want to depend on you. So you direct my steps moving forward for everything. Peak, do you remember me? I do. I remember you. Uh, was it your birthday yesterday? God bless you. When we come to our Abba, when we are facing something that can be terrifying and we're saying Abba this is what you say you are this is who I know you to be he sees you God sees you we don't have to fear the unknown because God knows what's coming God knows everything that's coming and if we put our trust in the Lord then we can trust him with everything moving forward. I'm not leaning on people for my future. I'm not leaning on circumstance. Um, we need people. Do we need people? Yes, of course. We're never meant to do life alone. Jesus sent the disciples out in pairs because we're not meant to do it alone. But at the end of the day, God is the source of all that I need. And I will lack nothing. He will lead me beside the still waters. Why still waters? Because still waters are calm. There's a calmingness that comes to it. A steady. Okay? God is steady. He is consistent. He has been, been showing us since we've been gathering that he is consistent. It's interwoven. So he's unchanging. He's consistent. And he's dependable. So if we're resting in him then we don't have anything to fear. So our reflection is telling us we have two things. We can either let the giant of fear, fear cripple us and keep us from entering into our promise and the promises and the plans that God has for us, or we can do what it takes to fight fear and be victorious because of who our Abba is. Not because we are strong, but because of who our daddy is. And I've I've made this um, connection before with the Lion King. When Simba goes into the elephant graveyard where he's not supposed to be there. Why? Because that is an area of fear. That is a parallel place. He's in a vulnerable situation because he's lit little. He can't defend himself yet. But he's not listening. Right? He's not doing what he's supposed to do. And so... Simba by himself is vulnerable. And we see that because the hyenas come to him. And they're circling around him. Good morning, Gloria. They're circling around Simba like they're getting ready to attack. 
But then daddy shows up and roars and they're mocking Simba because they're asking him, roar for us. You know, you're the, you're the king roar for us. And he goes to roar and they're mocking him. And then he goes to roar again and they hear Mufasa's roar because Mufasa has stepped on the sea. People can look at us and mock us for having faith, for walking in obedience, for laying aside the things of the world and think that I have a boring life. I don't have a boring life. I have a very fun life. I have a lot of fun in my life. And the next day when I wake up, I still remember what I did yesterday. So I don't regret anything. And um, so when things that are fearful try to circle around me and mock me because I know that I am a daughter of the king, you can't touch me unless my, my Abba says so. And if he set, he allows it, then it's for my benefit is to carve out my character is to smoothen out areas in my character where, where I am lacking so that I can take full possession of all the blessings that God has in store for, for me. Job, God allowed Job to go through times of struggle. But he always knew that at the end of it, he would bless him with more than what he started with because of Job's faith, faithfulness. So in times of trial, in times of struggle, I will depend on the Lord. I will lean in even more to the Lord. And so I'm not going to fear the things around me because as soon as I say, Abba, I need, need, need you. I no longer roar. It's no longer my roar. They hear it's my Abba God's roar and his roar strikes fear. So when God steps up on the scene, he steps up with power and authority and all of the things that we need in order to be confident. It's not us that we're confident in. We're only confident because we know who our God is. We know who our daddy is. We know who we serve. And we know that if we're walking in obedience and we're striving and we're pursuing the things of God, that he's going to come to our aid and we are going to be victorious in him. So I want to encourage you. There is a lot going on right now. There is a lot of fear being percolated all over socials. If it's striking fear, look, I, I, I love you guys, but I'm just going to be real. If it's striking fear, get off. Get off. Get off so, so social and go into your prayer closet. Open up your bi 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 Bible and start highlighting the, the promises of God. Because we don't have anything to fear. I don't have anything to fear. This life, this body is temporary. So I have a zero thing to fear. John, Johnny said, God's army is surrounding whatever is trying to cause us to fear. What we see is not what it looks like. Second Kings. I was just thinking that, Johnny. Second, thank you, Holy Spirit. Confirmation. Second Kings 6, 14 through 18. We have the victory. Second Kings 614. I'm pretty sure that this is exactly what I was thinking about. Um, this is, we're, I'm going to read this real quick and then we'll move on to Psalm 6, 14 through 18. This is when um, the arm, people were coming against Elisha. There was an army that was going to destroy Elisha. They thought that they had the final say, but God said otherwise. So, um, when the king of, uh, da, 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 da. okay, so Elisha, Elisha traps the Arame, Arameans. When the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, we will mobilize our forces at such and such a place. But immediately, Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, do not go near that place for the Arameans are planning to mobilize their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the place indicated by the man of God time and again, 
Elisha warned the king so that he would be on alert there. The king of Aram became very upset over this. He called his officers together and demanded, Which of you is the traitor? Who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? It's not us, Lord. The king, one of the officers replied, Elisha the prophet in Israel tells the king of Israel, even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. Go and find out where he is, the king commanded, so I can send troops to seize him. And the report came back, Elisha is at Dothan. So one night the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God, when Elisha's servant got up early the next morning and went out, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. Do not be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. As the Aramean's army advanced toward him, Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness as Elisha asked. Then Elisha went out and told them, You have come the wrong way. This isn't the right city. Follow me and I will take you to the man you are looking for. And he took them to the city of Samaria. As soon as they entered Samaria, Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, now open their eyes and let them see. So the Lord opened their eyes and they discovered that they were in the middle of Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he shouted to Elisha, my father, should I end them? Should I end them? Of course not, Elisha replied. Do we end prisoners of war? Give them food and drink and send them home to their master. So the king made a great feast for them and sent them home to their master. After that, the Aramean raiders stayed away from the land of Israel. Guys, straight up. That is what we're talking about right there. Why? Why? This is our the history. This is our history. This is our dad's history. This is who he is. This is what happens when our dad steps on the scene. When we ask him to come to our aid, he sees all. Elisha did not have to ask him for an army to surround that army. They were already there. Why were they already there? Because God was going to make sure that things happened the way he wanted. And he was protecting his Elisha. Elisha was his, not anyone else's. That was his son. And nobody was going to say, nobody was going to say when his son's time was up, but him. And so he stepped on the scene. If you think, what do we have to be afraid of? We need to be praying, Lord, open our eyes. Open our eyes to see. If someone comes against you, God is going to handle it. He's going to stand on business. That's the phrase these days, right? She stands on business. God, I don't need to stand on business. If someone comes against me, if someone comes against the word of God that I'm speaking, God is going to stand on business and handle business. And I don't need to be afraid of anything because I am in right standing with the Lord. I am in right standing. I am doing the things of the Lord. I am I am constantly, daily seeking out the Lord. I am making a conscience 
effort to walk in obedience, to make sure that I am pursuing the things of God, to make sure that every morning I am submitting my will, my desires, my plans as an offering to him, surrendering what I want for what he wants, because I know he knows better. He knows the big picture. He knows all the pieces. So what do I have to be afraid of? Nothing. If he decides that today is my last day, then that means that I woke up here on earth and I lay down and I never sleep again. Because in the next instant, I'm under the willow tree with him. So why do I need to be afraid of anything? That's what Jesus meant by don't fear the, the one that can destroy your physical body. I don't care about this. Because I know that I am secure in him. I know that I've been bought with a price. I know that I have signed my adoption papers. And I am an adopted daughter of the king. So I have no reason to fear. I have nothing to fear. Period. Exclamation point. I was laughing and telling um, my friend. I'm so serious. Like that's, That has been something that I've been saying to make to put emphasis on what I'm saying. And um, I was laughing and saying, that's going to be like our shirts or whatever, period, exclamation point. Um, period, expl explanation point, end of done. It's done. I don't need to be afraid of people. I don't need to be afraid of government. I don't need to be afraid of war or anything else that tries to come at me. I don't need to be afraid of the solar eclipse because God's, my dad is the one that created the sun. He's the one that tells the sun what direction to take. So why do I need to be afraid of what he created? He gives authority. He has, because he created it, he has authority over it, right? If you own a piece of property, if you own the land and you own the home, that is your property. You have authority over your property. And likewise, God has authority. He has over everything. He put the sun where it is. So why do I need to be afraid of an eclipse? If anything, wow, what a great, what a cool event. And if God just decides afterwards to deal with unright, right, righteousness and evil that has been going on in our country, then so be it. Am I going to be afraid? No. Because that evil is not, does not have anything to do with me. Because I don't belong to, before I am, look, I'm as patriotic as the next person. I love our con con country. I love what it stands for. But I'm not blind. Okay? Before I am an American, before I am a Texan, okay, I am a daughter of God. And because I am a daughter of God, that is my, that is my identity. My identity is is in him like done Ashley said sorry guys uh Drani, you're so on point miss ashley amen hallelujah praise him trust him have faith in him yes ashley said just invited a friend to life she's battling fear of unworthiness and needs to hear this look the devil wants you to feel unworthy because if you don't know the roar that is inside of your lungs that you will never roar. If you don't think that you're worthy, if you don't think you have a purpose, look, I am not worthy. In and of myself, I'm not worthy to sit here. I put myself in really bad situations. I would put myself in the pit of despair. I distanced myself from God. I allowed him into certain areas, but like we talked about yesterday, I didn't invite him in all, all areas of my life. I kept him at a distance, thinking that that was going to work, and it didn't. And when it proved to not work and I ended up in a pit, God is the one that was still there and faithful and pulled me out. That has nothing to do with me. That has to do with, it does not mean I cannot earn anything. Do you all understand how rewarding and freeing that it, that that is to know that I don't have to earn anything. 
our world, our culture makes us feel like we have to earn love. We have to earn this. I have to earn, I have to perform for my job in order to get a promotion. I have to perform, perform, perform. I don't have to perform for God. He loves me today just as much as he did when I was in that dark place. He will love me tomorrow or whoever I become. When I was, just when I was a baby, helpless, could not do a dang thing for myself. So, yes, there is a there is an, a healthy unworthiness. Like, I am of myself. I am unworthy. But he chose out of his love to send his son. That's what we're celebrating this weekend. We're celebrating the resurrection. We're not celebrating the death. The death dealt with sin. But the resurrection is what makes eternity powerful, like possible. If it ended at the cross, like what hope is there? But that's the point. It didn't end at the cross. It continued. And the power of the resurrection is why I can sit here and have confidence that at the end of everything, I'm not going to have wasted a thing. Um, he is, Johnny said, he's our commanding officer, not one appointed by man. Surrender to him. Yes. Why am I surrendering to anything else? Why am I surrendering to fear? Fear is not from God. It's not from my dad. I, I don't have to fear being disciplined from my dad. Because I know that discipline is about instruction. Discipline is not about punishment. True discipline is about te teaching. It is about teaching your children the right way to live their life. Does that mean there are consequences? Yes. Are those consequences sometimes painful? Yes. But that consequence is a teaching tool to deter behavior that is destructive so i don't fear my dad i know that if he's disciplining me it's because i've, I've stepped out of bounds somewhere and i need to check myself i need to be checked i want to be checked because i want to be walking in obedience a great reminder ashley said a great reminder is that even though everything here is causing fear and shocking us None of this is a shock to him. Exactly. He planned it all. He knows it all. That's why he laughs. Nothing has or will will ever catch him off guard. And he is in control. Jordan said, yes. Ashley said, the work's already been done. Jesus paid it all. Absolutely. He's already paid everything for us. So there's no reason to fear. We do not have to live in fear anymore, guys. We don't have to do it. Okay, we're going to move on to Psalm 46. And y'all, there could not be a better connection to everything that we're talking about today. Um, Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength. I swear y'all, I promise you guys, I have not pre-planned this ahead of time. I hadn't even looked at today's devotion and Psalm until this morning. Because I've been making the mistake of like doing it the night before in a chance to try to prepare. And then whatever I write down that night, the next morning when I ask the Holy Spirit for revelation, it's something completely different. So I'm like, Lord, you just speak through your word. It's alive, it's powerful, and it's active. So I did not plan this. God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble to the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble, tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city, cannot be destroyed. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. 
The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among, among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Guys, why do we need to be afraid? God is our fortress. He is our refuge. He is here among us. We have nothing to fear. Fear is a liar. Fear is a indication that we are lacking trust in God. Because if we trust that God knows all, if we trust that God knows our end from our beginning, then why are we fearing? If we have complete trust in God, why are we afraid? Because in some way, deep down, we don't fully trust. So fear is an indication that we need to trust in him. We need a deeper dependence on the Lord. So if you're feeling afraid, you need to go to your closet and you need to pray. One, you need to ask God, forgive me for my lack of faith. Just like Thomas did, forgive me for my doubt, right? Forgive me for my doubtfulness and remind me who you are. That I have nothing to fear because, and then declare this, you are my refuge and my strength. Always, you are always ready to help in times of trouble. So I will not fear when the earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains surge or tremble as the water surge. A river Brings joy to the city, to your city, the sac your sacred home. You dwell in that city and it cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, you will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. Your voice thunders and the earth melts. Your army, your heavenly army is here among us you are our fortress come see the glorious works of your hands see how you bring i will see how you bring destruction upon the world you cause wars to end throughout the earth you break the bow and snap the spear you burn the shields with fire. I will be still and know that you are God. You will be honored by every nation. You will be honored throughout the world. Your army is here among us. You are my fortress. Declare it over yourself. This is God's word. These are his promises. Declare it over yourself and watch your faith strengthen. Y'all, this, I mean, this lights a fire inside of me. I walked around in so much fear growing up, y'all. Like, and I've also noticed that I have not stuttered one time. Normally, I'm overly aware of when I do. I have not stuttered one time. And the only time that ever happens is one, whether I'm singing I'm either like, like the fire of God is like burning inside of me or I'm really, really angry. And it's a combination of both. I'm really, really angry that the enemy continues to use fear against my brothers and sisters. I'm really, really angry that the enemy's tools are allowed. I'm not mad at my brothers and sisters. I'm mad at the spirit behind it. I'm mad and ready to go to war and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that spirit. 
because I know who my dad is. And my dad said, I don't have to fear. He said to be still. He told me to be still and know that he is God. So my brothers and sisters should not be having to struggle with fear. So it makes me angry at fear. It lights a fire under me for my brothers and sisters, for my family that are that are dealing with this. Because it's a lie. We don't have to fear. God is on, he, God is going to stand on business and handle business. And the world is going to get worse. It's going to. This whole idea, like we've been way too comfortable, y'all. I'm telling y'all, I told y'all yesterday, I feel like, like we have been way too comfortable. And the American church knows not. We don't know suffering. We don't know suffering like those who are having to meet in secret. We don't know suffering. We saw a glimpse of it when pastors were being arrested for having service during the pandemic. I'm just saying things are going to get worse, but I'm not putting, I'm not going to fear people. I'm not going to fear man and what they can do to me. I'm going to stand on my, my, the promise of my dad and who my dad, who my Abba God is and do what he's telling me to do. He's, he's told, this is what he's opened the door for. So it's the door I'm going to go through. I'm going to walk through until he says otherwise. So every morning, Monday through Friday, I'm going to get on here and I'm going to share. And if people don't like it, and we get some trolls like we did last week or the week before, then so be it. I'm not scared. Like, hey, if you have something ugly to say, that's fine. You're welcome to it. Like, I'll let you say whatever you want. Doesn't mean that it affects me. Like, just because someone else says it doesn't mean it has to affect you. So don't walk in fear. I don't know where everyone lives. Like, um, I know Robin lives in, in California, and I know that Johnny, I, Maria, Vicky, um, my favorite friend, jo my friends, Joanna and Stephanie, we all live in Texas. I mean, and I know that Ash lives in Alabama, so I'm assuming that her friend lives there too, but her friend could live in Kentucky. Her friend could live somewhere else. I don't know. But we don't have to fear where God planted us right here. God planted you right where you are for such a time as this. And how we handle it is going to matter. Yes, you're in Alabama. Okay. Uh, do you say, um, is it Michaela? Is that how I say that? Let me know. Is it Michaela Renee? Or is it my Ciela? Um, we don't have to be afraid. God has planted you exactly where you are, in the state that you're in, in the city that you're in, in the home that you're in right now during this time and place. He could have planted, he we could have been created at any other time. But that was not what he, that's not what his plan was. His plan was for you to live and breathe right now where you are. So trust that he knows what's best. That he knows a whole lot more than we, we do. Okay. I want to pray for you guys. Um, I'm not sure if it's Michaela, Kayla. Yes. Close. Ma. Kyla, Makaya, Kyla, Makaya. Okay, I want to pray for you guys, um, and um, thank you for this. I definitely needed it. You're welcome. Praise God, praise God for using His Word to strengthen and encourage pe pe people. I'm just the vessel, you know, like He's the oil, so. 
let it floor let it flow out where it needs to so let's pray father god i thank you so much thank you thank you thank you abba for your word thank you for your reminder that we do not have to fear anything because we belong to you we do not have to fear what happens in our world in our country we do not have to walk and live in fear we don't have to fear the unknown because you know what's coming you know where we're headed and as long as we remain attached to you and we walk where you are telling us to walk and we go where you're telling us to go we will be okay so I pray, Father God, I speak to um, anyone, anyone hearing this, whether during live or they're wa watching it on replay. I pray, Fa Father God, that you would, your Holy Spirit would bring peace, comfort, and instill confidence. Silence the enemy's voice. Nail his mouth shut. I come against the spirit of fear. May the Lord, may you, our Abba God, rebuke the spirit of fear and anyone's mind, spirit that is coming against them right now. We declare it that you are God. We will be still and know that you are God. We will not fear solar eclipses. We will not fear the government. We will not fear anything that comes our way because we know that you will stand and have authority in the very end anyway. So we place our trust. We place our hope and our dependence on you. Help us to stay attached to you. Help us to stay connected to you. Even if that means we're attached at the hip. I just pray that you would just help us to walk in peace. Thank you that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Thank you, Abba, for your precious gift of adoption. Thank you for the precious gift of salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for being our sacrifice so that we could have this opportunity, so that we could come as a child of God and bring and, and enter the presence of God without being afraid, without having to be walk in fear, but to, but to have the freedom to walk in obedience and in confidence, knowing that we are children of God. God, I pray that as we go from here, that you would bless everyone's coming and going, that you would keep them safe, that, they're, that you would give them peace, that your peace would guide them, guide, guide them, protect their hearts and minds as they live for you. In Jesus' name we pray all of these things and we declare, amen. I love you guys so much. Um, Makai Kyla, I want you to play the song. As soon as we end, I want you to go to YouTube Music. Our friends at Jay Walker's Worship just released a song last Friday. So five days ago. It's called In the Presence. And I want you to play this song. It's called In the Pre Presence. It's by Jay Walker's Worship. Okay. Ashley has a link because I sent it to her last week. So Ashley, if you would do me a favor and send that link to Makai Ky Kyla so that she has that. I want you to play it and I want you to close your eyes and I want you to declare it, play it over and over and over until you know these words and you repeat that bridge. Fear has no power. Shame is undone in the presence of your love. Play that over and over until your spirit is strengthened, until your spirit is strong. I'm telling you, I've had it on loop. It's either been on a loop on my phone or on my laptop because I will not allow myself to walk in a spirit of fear. I will not allow myself to walk in a spirit of shame. I don't, I don't bow to shame. Fear has to bow 
or no, fear has no power. Shame has to bow. Anxiety has to kneel and depression is healed. This is what happens when we come into the presence of our God. This is the declaration. This is word. This is not just lyrics written out. These are found in scripture. So we don't need to be anxious. Be anxious for nothing. But by prayer and petition, giving thanks to our God. Submit your request to him. So these are powerful words that are from scripture that are scripture based, right? And walk in them. Let them arm you and fill you with peace and confidence, knowing who's, who's you are. I love you all so much. I love you so all so much. That is day 46. I'm going to go film my reading of the chapter and I will be posting that on probably around noon. I love you guys so much and I will see you back tomorrow at the Willow Tree. Hope to see you here. Bye. Oh, the God who...